Hello? Curtis, my boy. Why aren't you at work? Mr. Warner, I... Well, I, I thought that after Bob and all that we wouldn't... Well, you thought wrong, Curtis. Get those lazy bones on in here. Cold-hearted son of a bitch. I had a really awful nightmare last night, Blob. Do rats have nightmares? Hmm. Bridget's Books is proud to welcome best-selling author Adrian Delaney. Ms. Delaney will be signing copies of her latest book, Coping with Loss. Hmm, she's pretty. Hell? It's been plastered over. They're trying to hide something. I don't care about your productivity, Mr. Warner. You had no right to destroy evidence. I have every right to make this work environment safe and pleasant for my employees, Detective. This investigation would have been over in a matter of days. 
As it stands, your little redecorating spree may have caused you an obstruction of justice. Would you mind if we took this discussion to my office, Detective Powell? Fine.
Trevor Barnes. Hey, bud. What's up, weasel boy? Oh, nothing much. I'm just sitting here two feet away from a murder site trying to be a productive little worker. Harsh. Hang in there, man. I'm doing my best. This is Jocelyn. Hi, baby. How are you today? I'm... I'm okay, Curtis. I'm still upset about Bob, you know? I know, Joss. Me too. Wish I could make it better. Well, thanks, baby. Hello, this is Curtis Craig, and I'm... Hello, Curtis. Who is this? Sorry, man, I can't talk right now. I'm right in the middle of disemboweling somebody. Hi, Therese. Well, if it isn't my slave. <laughs> you were really good last night, baby. You're quite an actor, you know that? Thanks. Curtis, if you let me, I'll take you on erotic adventures you've never even imagined. This is Curtis. Don't hang up on me, you murdering psycho son of a bitch! Hey man. Can you believe they dragged our butts into work today? Yeah, the sensitivity is overwhelming. It was almost worth it to see that cop chewing on Warner's saggy ass, though. Yeah, that was pretty damn cool, wasn't it? That's too bad she didn't pistol whip him. Ooh. Hey, bud. How was your second date with a mysterious Jay, huh? A dud. Big time. I mean, once I got past the sexy eyes, the gorgeous cheekbones, I saw the squid beneath the skin. Oh, what a drag. Yeah, you telling me? He spent half the evening picking apart Bella Lugosi's acting and the other half staring at his own bad self in the bathroom mirror. He doesn't like Bella? Mm-mm. Oh, well, piss on him then. Oh, yeah. You know, I didn't feel a damn thing about Bob yesterday. But today I can't get the poor jerk out of my head. I keep seeing him splattered all over the walls. No wonder, bud. That was really nasty. So, um, do you uh, talk to anybody about it? Yeah, I went to this shrink yesterday. Dr. Harburg. I'm gonna see her again today. Cool.
Hi, Joss. Hello, Curtis. Listen, I am so sorry about being such a jerk yesterday. I was pretty freaked out, I guess. We all were. It's okay. Curtis, I um, tried to call you last night. I couldn't reach you. The phone just kept ringing and ringing. I'm sorry, Joss. I just... No, no, don't apologize. You don't have to answer to me. Do whatever you want to do. I know. I Look, I just... I just unplugged the phone and I took a sleeping pill, okay? I, I just checked out for the night. All right? I hope she locks him up with Hannibal Lecter. Hi, Trees. Hi. I sure had fun last night. How about you? Yeah. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> <laughs> You'll think of me every time you feel those bruises. Therese? Therese? Decaf, babe.
Don't even think about going over my head, Tom. Don't even think about it. You're losing it, Paul. Next meeting of the board, your head is gonna fly. Don't you threaten me. You don't know what you're getting into. Oh, cut the dramatics, Paul. Your time here is up. You are a dead man, Rappel. A dead man. You are a dead man, Craig. A dead man. Nurse, what am I doing? Why am I here? I don't, I, don't, I don't belong here. Shut up, wacko. Chicken McNugget, nugget, nugget. Hey, stop that right now or I'll have you sedated. Latex! Freak! Monster! I saw you. I saw you when they brought you in. I saw your guts! Bud, you gonna live? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. Yeah. This is ridiculous. I don't give a damn what Paul said. I want you all to go home right now. I'm okay. Tom's right, Curtis. You better run now. You're out of your depth. You look terrible, Curtis. Go home and get some sleep, okay? Sweet dreams.
murder without the mess. Enter the revolting psyche of Curtis Craig. Hey! Hey, girl. Rats are so much better than people. No, you're the only one I can really count on. How touching, freak boy. <sighs> Relax, Craig. It's only Blob. The only thing that loves you. Hey. Hey. Hey, Trev, what's with the shake? Aren't you worried about your tiny waistline there? Just drowning my sorrows, bud. Yeah, I admit it. I'm uh, feeling some delayed nerves about poor old Bob. I got kind of freaked out this afternoon myself. Oh God, it was just so weird sitting there, you know, right where he got splattered. I think I'll have a big potato. <coughs> <coughs> ah, 
What? <laughs> you remember my, uh, my Aunt Emily? The one that lives uh, in Arizona, out in the desert? Yeah, the one that likes the animals. Yeah, that's the one. She, uh, she always tosses her, her dinner leftovers outside for the, uh, the poor little woodland creatures, you know? Woodland? Yeah, I thought she lived in the desert. Shut up, my story! <laughs> so anyway, one, one time when I was there, she hauls back, and she tosses this old, mangy, big, yucky baked potato outside, and it was beautiful, man. I mean, that woman has an arm like a pro ball player, and that spud just arced through the air until this sweet little bunny rabbit came hopping out of the bushes right into the path of destruction. No way. Way, afraid <laughs> so. And that tater hit Mr. Bunny right between the ears. You know, for a moment it looked like a little brown German hill. I've never seen a bunny rabbit jump that high in my life. You think that's funny? That poor rabbit is probably in therapy right now. <laughs> Trev, seriously, um, have you ever had really horrible thoughts? Well, like what? Like wanting to kill someone? Trev, I wanted to kill Bob. Every time he laughed at me, I just wanted to fucking kill him. Everybody feels that way once in a while, man. Don't worry about it. Huh? Hey, listen, man. I gotta go. I've, uh, I've got a date for dinner. Someone new? Well, tell me about him. No. Okay. His name's Mike, and um, <laughs> I met him at the pre-Raphaelite exhibit downtown. And he's smart and funny and cuter than hell. That's great. Well, have a good time. I'm gonna try. <laughs> Hello, Curtis. How are you? I'm okay, Doc. I can't help you if you lie to me. Fine, I think I'm losing my goddamn mind. Have a seat. Let's talk. Doctor, why did you want me to come back again today? That's not your standard policy, is it? No. No, it isn't, Curtis, but I can tell that we have a lot of work to do together. And I wanted to get the groundwork done right away. Is that all right? Fair enough. On this date with Therese last night, I got my navel pierced. This S&M club on stage in front of a room full of people. Is that something that you wanted to do? I don't, I don't think so. I just, I don't know, I just, I just wanted to be controlled at the moment, you know? I wanted Therese to do things to me. But when it was over, my feelings totally reversed. I, I wanted to control her. How exactly did you want to control her? I don't know, it was weird. I, when I got off the stage, she was right there, and, um, I just, I just pounced on her, and I, I, I picked her up, and I took her into a bathroom, and we just did it. We just did it like a couple of animals. And how did she react to that? She absolutely loved it. <laughs> I thought she was going to break me in half. Curtis, did you ever consider that maybe she was the one in control of everything? No. But you're probably right. I 
found this letter that my father left me. Listen to this. The Threshold Project is not in itself an evil thing, Curtis. But as long as it is in the hands of Paul Warner and Wintech, nothing good can come of it. It is beyond the scope. Jesus, Doctor, does this sound like a crazy man wrote this? I don't think so, Curtis. It sounds perfectly rational to me. Tell me the truth, Doctor. Does insanity run in families? Yes, it can, Curtis. But that sort of mental illness is generally a chemical imbalance, and it's very, very treatable. Oh, God. Oh, God, maybe I've always been crazy. I mean, I can't, I can't remember big chunks of my childhood. You're and... upsetting yourself, Chris. Oh, Just God. try to relax and take a deep breath. You've got to stop it or I will. I'll kill you, you son of a bitch. Doctor, my father was murdered. Oh my God, I, I never saw him dead before. But after they hit him with the car, they got out and they shot him. Oh my God, they shot him. Suppressed trauma like this can cause such great emotional problems. I think you'll start improving now. My mother's hatred for me went went way beyond humiliation and hitting. She, um, she tortured me. She, she did things to me that, um, uh, you hear about happening in Chile and Nicaragua. How did she torture you, Curtis? Curtis! Come here, monster. What's under that crawling, slimy skin of yours? It's all right, Curtis. It's over now. She's gone. You survived it. You're here, Curtis. Doctor, I think that this threshold project, whatever it was, got shut down a long time ago, but I think it's been reopened now. In fact, I think it's back in full swing. What makes you think that? A whole lot of little things. Files I've seen, conversations I've overheard. I think it's bad, Doctor. I think it's something that no one has ever tried to do before. Now, be sure you keep the difference between imagination and evidence clear in your mind, all right? Oh, you think I've been watching too much X-Files. Doctor, I think I might have killed Bob. I don't remember doing it, but I can't get the idea out of my head. I, I hated him. I wished he were dead so many times. Well, that's highly unlikely, Curtis. Homicidal blackouts are extremely rare. Have faith in yourself. Do you really think that you could do something like that? Maybe.
I had this experience with my coworker, Therese. The sex was savage. Consensual? All the way around? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, Doctor, she brought out feelings in me that were frightening. I mean, wild, almost violent feelings. I felt like anything I wanted to do to her, anything I could dish out, she could take it. This is going to sound really twisted, but sometimes I wish I could just live with Jocelyn and Trevor both. You know, somewhere far away where no one would judge us and we wouldn't have to see another person. Many people have fantasies like that, Curtis. Just because it isn't standard behavior in our society doesn't make it wrong. After my f mother started hating me, I, uh, my father got so weird. He sort of withdrew. And he just kept looking at me with those sad, sad eyes. Did he protect you from your mother's irrational rages? He tried. Not hard enough. Oh, she hurt me. Oh, she hurt me so bad. God. I think we made some wonderful progress today, Curtis. Um, I'd like to see you again next week, but please don't hesitate to call if you need to talk. Okay. I will. Thank you, Doctor. Uh huh. In today's session with Curtis Craig, I determined that the patient was delusional, possibly paranoid, with the potential for violence. Therese in here right now, big time. Whatever, I want to come in anyway. Suit yourself. No, I think you'd be more comfortable in that yuppie bar down the street. Really? Well, I think you'd be more comfortable in a sideshow. You know, I think I'm beginning to like you. Who's there?
Therese. How did you get in? I'm a woman of many talents. Curtis, come sit down with me. Have you been here long? Long enough to get to know your rat. She's a real sweetie. Thanks. You know, you really startled me when I first came in. That was the idea, Curtis. Do you break into people's apartments often? No. Only when I really like them. Patrice, I don't want to be rude, but what are you doing here? <laughs> well... I didn't come here to talk. Well, what did you come here to do? I'm not so sure about this, Therese. Good. This is getting kind of intense, Therese. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we're not even close to intense yet. Be quiet. Therese, I... Please, I... I want to touch you. I said be quiet, slave. I will we'll just have to zip up that sweet mouth of yours. If you can't be a good boy, would you like that? Would you? Don't you dare. I think you're a good boy, Curtis. A very good boy, indeed. Most seriously, Mr. Warner's unfeeling Responsible actions endangered the mental and physical well being of all employees under his management. There. That ought to be enough to fry your ass, Warner. Thank <laughs> you. 